Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. We're going to look at verses 30 through 39. Matthew chapter 10, verses 30 through 39. The title of the message is, It's Time to Settle. It's Time to Settle. Matthew chapter 10, verses 30 through 39. It's Time to Settle. It's Time to Settle. Matthew chapter 10, verse 30. The Bible says, But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before man, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before man, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I am not to send peace, but, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Brother Jay, can you pray for the message? Worship you, praise you, and to listen to your word. Amen. We thank you for the cross of Calvary. Thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ's blood, which is shall Calvary's cross to wash all our sins away. Thank you so much for protecting us throughout the week to be here. We ask you that you'll be with those who are able to come for whatever reason. Lord bless them. And for those who are here, Lord God, we ask you that you'll open our hearts, minds, and ears to your word. Help us to listen with all, with all that we have. Help us to change for the better, Lord. And fill Pastor Jay with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Yes, sir. Give him the liberty to declare your word freely unto us. And we ask you that you'll protect us from devil's attacks. And that we ask you that you'll be the only one who receives the glory and honor today. We thank you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 It's time to settle. There are a lot of things that people have to settle. You know, before you get married, you have to settle on the venue. You have to settle on all the programs. And I'm sure that's something that you know, Brother Josh and Sister Katie, and as well as Brother Caleb and Sister Sungmin has to figure it out. And you settle a lot of things. You settle before you, know, you have to go on a travel right, with your family. You settle on a date. You settle on a place. And you settle on how long it's going to be. A lot of times you settle if you have to meet a business partner, right? you settle where you're going to meet, where you're going to do your business. And if you're working on a contract, you settle on what terms, right? You know, such as the length, you know, who's going to pay what, invoicing, and all that stuff. So people settle things all the time. Like today, you settle with your mind to come to church. Because sometimes you settle in a wrong way. Like Sunday, uh, I'm just going to rest. You know, like, I'm going to settle because not going to church is the best thing for me today. For some reason, you know, sometimes you could justify those things where not going to church is the best thing for me. But for, I mean, sometimes you don't want to see a person at church. So that's, that's the reason you settle that way. Very understandable. You know, human beings they are full of strife, envy. You, know, you don't really want to see certain people, if, right? Or for many other reasons, because you don't like the way you look. You know, sometimes people don't come to church. You know, that shouldn't be a reason. And even though, because people are wicked, they judge people based on their looks all the time. Even the Lord doesn't, but human being does all the time. 
You know, that shouldn't be a reason that you don't come to church. You shouldn't settle that way. Again, why, why would you need to care right, about what other people think when all that matters is, you know, does Jesus care? You know, thank, thanks, you know, Sister Im Jung for playing that with Sister Joanna. Does Jesus care? The reason you and I could settle is because of Jesus Christ and because he cares. As they were playing, I was trying to remember the words of the hymn. And you know, the chorus goes like, oh, yes, he cares. You know, sometimes you can't settle because you don't think anyone cares. You're wondering, right? You know, being, making yourself settled in is not the easiest thing to do in this busy world. There's always something going on. There's always something that's not, how should I say, comfortable going on in your life. There are financial issues. There are marital issues. You know, there are physical issues. And so you're not settled. What happens when someone's not settled? They always move around. There are always, you're like a nomad, you know. Your mind is not set at a single place. It's continuously moving, wandering, going everywhere. What happens in that state? You don't really have peace. You know, the perfect peace that you know, Christians should have and living within, you don't have that peace. Of course, you have peace of going to heaven. However, when it comes to living a victorious Christian life, you don't have that peace. Because you, don't, you haven't settled things that you should have settled long, long time ago. And a lot of times you lose perspective and you forget that you could settle because Jesus Christ is there. Because Jesus Christ cares. How hard it could be or how hard it would be to settle certain stuff that's going on in your life. You could settle because of Jesus Christ. I mean, the hymn says, oh yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. Maybe you can't settle because of too much grief, because it's really hard. You know, it's a certain thing that you struggle with. And if, if you settle it, you feel like you're going to go into a state of despairment, anxiety. However, Isim says, I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. Lord is there to understand. Lord is there to give you comfort. And you have the Holy Ghost in you to give you comfort. When the days are weary, the long nights dreary. I'm sure, I don't know about young people, maybe because of their academics, but a lot of people lose sleep. Why? Because they are weary and because nights are dreary. Sometimes you don't want to see next day, right? Because... I mean, next day, you feel like it's going to bring something worse. Sometimes you want the day to end at that moment. Especially if you're having a good day, you want the day to be over. And especially, you know, if you know something's going to be coming, hardship's coming, a lot of times because of devil's attack, a lot of times because of your sin problems, you feel like, man, let's, let's stop it. You know, sometimes people do pray, even so come Lord Jesus, because of pain and suffering that's about to come. And you know very well, especially grown-ups, older ones, you know, you lose sleep because of stress, because of what's going to stress you next day or next week, next month, or even next year. Then you just can't settle. You can't settle at a state where you should be and just concentrating on serving Jesus Christ wholly. And you're always distracted. You're distracted, left and right. Your focus is not on the Lord Jesus Christ. Your focus is always on something else. Why is it that you settle everything else, but you don't settle your relationship with Lord Jesus Christ? I mean, how many of you actually have a right relationship with Lord Jesus Christ today? How many of you guys actually can testify and stand up and say, yes, I have clean 
perfect or close to perfect relationship with Lord Jesus Christ, the best way I know how, because I've done my best and I have no regrets. There are very few in Christian walk who can testify like that. Either they're lying or they're true. And not many people testify like that because it's really hard. It's not only for pastors. It's not only for preachers, evangelists, missionaries to have that kind of relationship. It's for everyone to have that kind of relationship, Amen. like peaceful, perfect. You know, when you have perfect peace in your heart, you can't replace it with anything else. Why do you think billionaires out there always strive to get more done? Why do you think they need more success? I mean, they don't even have to live, I mean, work for the rest of their lives and their generations after generations because there's something's missing. They're not settled. Billions not going to settle them. Ten billions not going to settle them. They continue and continue and continue, and they never have a perfect peace. And isn't it a common thing when someone says, man, Sunday night gives me stress because Monday's work day. Right? Uh, many people, right? You know, Saturday, Friday after work, you feel good. But when Sunday night comes around, and you start stressing out, especially if you have deadline to meet, especially if you have to have a meeting with some people that you don't want to meet, you know, or you have to go somewhere that you don't want to, then you start stressing out. But as Christians, you shouldn't, let, you shouldn't be stressing out certain things. You should just settle it to the Lord. Because Jesus Christ cares. You know what, Lord? You know, these certain things are stressing me out. So I'm just going to take it to you. And then, Lord, I'm going to do my best. You know, guide me, right? Yes. And then direct my path. But instead, you, like a carnal Christian that you are, stress, stress, just keep on stress, come and come and come. And then it affects your Christian life as well as your family life. You don't have a right relationship with Lord Jesus Christ and you don't have right relations with your families because you're not settled. You know, when kids see their daddy always, you know, nervous, in anxiety, not settled, especially settled in Lord Jesus Christ, what happens? They become nervous. Hey, they become anxious, right? They look at their parents, and they're not settled, and they're always nervous, they're always talking about stresses of life, tomorrow, next day, even tonight, today, and they can never be settled. And that kid grows up and to be the same. They don't have that peace. They're, they're saved, don't get me wrong. They have that peace of going to heaven, but they don't have peace living their day-to-day -day life as a Christian. And that is something many Christians struggle with. You just can't settle. You're just always wondering, right? And a lot of times, it's maybe for right reasons in the sight of you know, worldly people, but it's not the right reason according to the Word of God. And how do you know that? By going to the Word of God. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Think about some of the things that you have to get settled today. You know you have many things to settle in your life, but there are certain barriers and obstacles that is stopping you from settling with Lord Jesus Christ. You've been avoiding Lord, avoiding the Lord. You've been avoiding talking to Him about it. You've been avoiding going to Him in prayers because you are so stressed out because you don't want to deal with it. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3, the Bible says, For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as man? I mean, as Christians, you shouldn't be walking as a man out there, right? Full of envying, strife, and divisions. Just living a carnal life. When someone envies someone, they'll never have a peaceful heart. 
that will always, always be stressed out. Yes. Whatever that envy may be, right? You're envying for their looks, for their possessions, for whatever it might be. You have envy. You, you're never going to walk in the spirit. You're going to always walk as a carnal person. True. And strife as well, right? Yes. Some of you guys just like to fight, be argumentative, right? And you become angry quite often. How many of you, how many men here who gets angry very quickly? You know, don't answer. You cannot, <laughs> please don't answer. You know, it's not a good thing, and it's not a good testimony. And maybe at a summer camp or at a meeting, you know, we like, you know, get right with the Lord, you know, give a good testimony, people get encouraged from it. But <laughs> don't, don't say, you know what, I'm, I, I get angry very quick. That's not a, that is a very bad thing. Why is it? You know, why do you get angry? No, one of the reasons is because you have a lustful, immoral, you know, sin that's, you know, bothering you or got a hold of you. My brother Derek Grande, long time ago, preached at a summer camp, you know, especially a young man. You know, people who are quick to anger, right, they have, a, you know, lustful sin problems, living an immoral life. That's why you have a quick to anger problem. And there's a lot of truth in it. You, if you do get angry quickly, quite often, become very argumentative always, you know, trying to win your points all the time, you know, there might be a, you know, sin problem, you know, lustful sin problem that you have that you need to, you know, resolve and get right with the Lord. You know, it's, it's a common fact. Something is really frustrating you. That's why. And a lot of times it's a, you know, lustful, sinful desire that's causing you to do it. And if you reflect and examine and think about why was I or why am I such an angry person, I guarantee you, you have some problems, you know, in, that, in those areas. And not only men, right, nowadays, right? It goes both ways, you know, women as well. And anger is one of the ways to try to hide your sin. You know, believe it or not, when a couple of people are having arguments, right? When husband and wife are having arguments, or with children, or people who actually are at fault always try to be louder, trying to, you know, get more angry. Yes. Why? Because you know you've done wrong. So people who get angry quickly, those are the people who's in sin problems for sure. You get angry a lot. Sometimes you don't have to show it. I'm not saying like, oh, yeah, you get so angry, worked up, you know, you just shout and yell. Not only that, internal anger. Right? Someone says something talking to you, whether it's your wife, husband, your mom, your dad, you know, your preacher, or anybody else talking to you, and your heart's like, oh, I'm so angry, you know. I don't, I don't want to listen to him. I don't want to listen to her. Blah, blah, blah. Let it come one year, let it go the other year. And after the conversation, you give that fake smile, but you go home and you're like, I'm so angry. You know, how can he, how can she talk to me like that? You know, and then you let your anger out in your immoral ways, whatever that may be. So you have to think about it. I mean, are you walking as a man, you know, carnal Christian right now? In many ways, if you display or if you have any of these characters, you are. I mean, Church of Corinthians was famous for, you know, being a carnal church. And the, some things that, you know, it's really hard to utter from the pulpit, the things that was going on. However, don't think that I'm not like people of Church of Corinthians. Right? You and I, if we live after our carnal self, we are like the Church of Corinthians. I mean, the fact that you even had like, a, oh, you know, I'll never do such a thing. You're the person who will do such a thing. And I think it's a dangerous thing for a Christian to say, or any person to say that I'll never do it. You know? Because there's going to come a, 
circumstance where you're going to do it. So don't ever say, like, never, ever, right? Only thing never, ever is that well, you and I will never, ever burn in hell because we trust that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. But when it comes to any sin, you and I could very well do it. Because we're carnal beings. We're just fleshly beings. We're not perfect. Unless you and I recognize that and settle it, once and for all, and settle it on a daily basis in our Christian walk, we can never get out of it. It's the cycle, right? It's sad, but as Christians, you go through the same cycle, wrong cycle. You sin, you walk in your carnal ways, you never settle it, pretending to be settling it. A lot of times, without the real repentance, you cannot settle especially those sin problems. And this repentance is not about just being feeling sorry, just saying sorry. It's a complete, complete, complete turnaround from that sin. Yeah. Right? I mean, unless you resolve it, unless you settle it, you will never get out of it. So what happens is that you commit this sin, and then you think that you're walking right with the Lord for a few months, and then you commit this sin again, walking right with the Lord for a few months, a few days or a few weeks for some people, or a few hours for some people, and then you go up again, and then there's like point, one point, two point, it's like 12 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock. It's perfect. Your cycle is perfect, right? Pretend to get right, commit. Pretend to get right, commit. Pretend to get right and commit. And it, that has been way of your life for so many years. And sometimes you're like, man, I want to really get right with the Lord. I want to get out of this carnal ways of walking. Man, I'm sick and tired of it. Man. However, you just stop there. It's like you're, you're, you're like stopping at, at the door to the entrance of your solution. You get up to there, and you hesitate a little bit. And at that moment, the world, flesh, and the devil makes, say, show, I mean, tempt you again. And then you get tempted. Yeah. And then you fall again. Man, how pitiful is that? How sad is that? When you look at your life, when you look at my life, and if there are certain ways, because we never really settled it with the Lord. We never really settled it once and for all. Like, you don't settle it once and for all. Just like trusting Christ as your Lord and Savior, you'll never settle it. And that thing, whatever it may be, whether it's your sin problem, whether it's a person, whether it's material or anything, it's going to follow you around for the rest of your life. Whether it's, you know, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, until you die or until the Lord comes back, that thing's going to follow you and follow you. Everybody hates leeches, right? Real leeches, blood-sucking leeches, right? Yes. It's going to continue to suck your blood over and over. It's like that tick. You cut the head up, but body's still in it. It's continuing to go, continuing. And so many of you listening and sitting in this congregation are going through it. Because you never settled it. You never really, really settled it with the Lord. If you don't settle it with the Lord, then it's not going to happen. You could settle it with yourself. And a lot of times you think it's okay. You know what? I am not going to do it. You know what? I am going to do it. You know what? This, this, and that. However, do you think your flesh and your own determination can really resolve those problems? No. Never. It could let you go as far as your emotion allows you to go. But that's it. Yes. How many of you guys, just think about when you got saved, you're fired up for the Lord, and every, every person around you, 
man, you love him so much, right? You know, they're lost so on their way to heaven. You know, you have to go talk to every single one of them because you don't want them to burn in hell because you want them to experience the same thing that you experience being getting saved from hell, you know, by believing Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. How long did it last if you've been saved for a long time, right? If it continues since then, I mean, if it was like 20, 50 years ago, you're a special person. However, as a normal human being, you have your ups and downs. You have your mountains and you have your valleys. And people who are so gung-ho in the beginning, a lot of times will face you know, deep valleys because they were at a such high place. So you're going to face a deeper, steeper fall. Some people who are like just steady, you know, living a balanced life, they're saying. So you have to look at yourself. I mean, am I living a balanced Christian life? Balance is so important. What he tells us is that this person does well at church, does well at home, and does well everywhere. If you only do well at church, something's wrong with you. You might look like spiritual, you might look like a great guy, great girl, great lady, you know, sister and brother in Christ at church. But if your home is messed up, then you haven't really settled anything. Right. Vice versa. You're the best daddy and best mommy at home. You're the best child and best, you know, and some everything at home. But when it comes to church stuff, you know, you're indifferent, you don't care, you don't do nothing for the Lord. Very bad balance. Or other people, they're not good at home, they're not good at church, but they're good at, to everybody else. And they're the worst people, right? You know, they're, they neglect their family, they neglect their church. But, man, to people outside of church and home life, they're like angels to them, right? They're like, wow, you're godsend, brother. You're godsend, sister. That's why people give, you know, dirty eyes. Like their own family. You never do that at home. But man, you're doing it outside of home. You never do that at church. Oh, but you're doing it outside of church. Be the same person that you are. If you're gonna be a jerk, be jerk everywhere. If you're gonna be a nice, I mean good person, be a good person everywhere. And you don't wanna be a hypocrite, right? I mean, just be where you are, that's where you could find solution. Because if you go back and forth like chameleon, then you'll never find a solution. That's why you just can't settle, whatever it is. That's why you're not a settled person. When you're not settled, then obviously you're going to walk in carnal life. You're going to walk as a carnal person. Just like chameleon, when situation changes, you're going to change the same. When situation goes bad, you go bad. When situation goes good, you go good. People having a good day, right? And you're good to your family. Having a bad day, right? You're bad to your family. I mean, that's not a good example. That's not really a good, you know, Christian. Just because you're having a bad day, why do you make your other people have the same bad day, right? Don't you hate bosses where when they're having a bad day, they have to make their other people report to them have a bad day as well, right? When they're having a bad day at home, they bring it to work and make other people's life miserable, right? You could be that same person. Because you're a human being, I'm a human being, we're going to have bad days then how do you deal with it? Have you settled that in your heart? No matter what happens, I'm going to take it to the Lord because Jesus Christ cares. Once you go to the Lord and settle it with the Lord, everything else works out. The reason that it never works out for you is because you never go to the Lord and really settle it. And it's not about a simple 10-second prayer. Lord, please settle it for me. No, it doesn't work like that. You have to really drop on your knees and really talk to him. Really pour your heart out. That's something that's missing in many Christians' life. They just think that just 
having a small conversation is okay, and it's done. It's the you know, solution to everything. You have to have a deep conversation, right? Families, when your daddy, your mommy, or a kid says, let's have a deep conversation, like you kind of get startled, right? Oh, man, what did he do? What did she do, right? Or it could just be some you know, important stuff. Even though you're scared, even though you might not want to talk about it, even though it's something that you've been neglecting and running away from, you have to go to the Lord and really settle it now. Whether it's your sin problem, a lot of times it's your sin problem, whether it's you know, some sin that you just can't get rid of, right? It, or it's your spiritual you know, indifference or like you just don't care like you used to. You know, whether it's about your family, whether it's about your work, whether it's about your friends, or whether it's about your anything, you have to settle it with the Lord according to the Word of God. Carnal Christians, they don't spend time in the Word of God. Who does? A lot of times, they spend time with carnal things, so they neglect the Word of God, so nothing really convicts them. How many times when you haven't settled with the Lord, you've just doing things that you're not supposed to, but it didn't really convict you as much, right? Degree of conviction, the sin, right? So, for example, some people will say bad words. And some people cuss. For some who's really right with the Lord and think about their testimony about the holy temple of God, even just the thinking about it or even saying it in their heart, they get really convicted, even if it doesn't come out of your mouth, right? You say certain stuff in your heart like, oh, Lord, I'm really sorry, you know. But for some, it's natural, even if you're like Christian, right? You, you say F word, you know, you say S word, you say B word, it's like nothing. You, know, you say it in your heart, but you also it comes out in your mouth. But there's like no conviction in you. What does that tell you? You're so far away from the Lord. Preach. You're so far away about, I mean, does it even hit you when you sing or when you hear hymns like, does Jesus care? I mean, when the days are weary, the long nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. Do you even know that Savior cares for you? Do you even care about it? Obviously, for some, you don't care because you're too deep in your sin. You're too deep in your carnal ways. You're too deep in this despair and anxiety that you forget that Jesus Christ cares. I mean, there's solution. Lord is always there to resolve it for you if you take it to him from bottom of your heart, with all of your heart. Amen. I mean, when, when we looked at our verse in Matthew chapter 10, the Lord says, you know what? A lot of your loved ones are going to give you the most trouble. How many of you guys went through it, right? When you got saved, you found the truth, you know King James Bible, and you tell it to your family, loved ones, they hate it. Someone who actually you felt like would receive it the best, who loves you the most, hate it the most, right? And the Bible says that a man's foe shall be day of his own household. When those things come, how do you settle? Right? If you settled it with Jesus Christ, and you know that Lord cares, now those things, you know, won't bother you as much like you, you let it bother. If you settle it with the Lord, even though your mommy and your daddy might hate you, even though your son and your daughter might hate you, you're going to go on and you're going to push forward and you're not going to have that worry and stress because Jesus Christ cares. He wants what's best for you. He knows what's best for you. And if you go to him, any of these things, your family, the world, the flesh, the devil, will not stop you from settling with the Lord. 
you really need to settle with, with the Lord. When was last time, seriously speaking, when was last time you really went to the Lord to settle things in your life? It's not about always asking the Lord for this and that. Give me this, give me that, right? Lord, solve this, solve that. You know, Lord, you know, blah, blah, blah. But when did you actually really go to the Lord and settle it with the Lord, the things that you need to settle with? If you don't, then like I mentioned, the cycle will continue. Sunday, Wednesday, some days, you get convicted. You say the preaching's great, Bible study's great, Word of God is great, fellowship is great. But outside of it, you live the same old life, live a sinful life, live an unsettled life. Come back, 9 o'clock, church, 9 to 12, unsettled life. 12 o'clock, church, okay, 3, 6, and continue and continue and continue. Not just as a human being, besides from being saved or whatnot, isn't that a pitiful sad life to live in? Where there's no single direction, there's no settlement in your life, you just go hopping here, there, here, there, living a nomad life. There's no perfect peace. There's always anxiety and worry in your life. And psychiatrists will love you as his or her client because today you're settled, kind of, and then you go back and you come back to me again. What do you think? They have a repeat customers all the time. Even though they heard the solution, they do the same thing and come back. They hear the solution, they do the same thing and come back. But you, as a Christian, shouldn't be like that. You who have Jesus Christ in you as your Lord and Savior. You who have Holy Spirit as your comforter. You have who? Jesus Christ, who cares for you. Why do you have to be a wonder? Why do you have to be a nomad? Why do you have to always repeat that cycle when you could go to the Lord and settle it once and for all? Every eye closed, every head bowed. So we're going to have an invitation today, and we don't do it often. I know it's something that we have to do where we have to really settle with the Lord. You know, this is a time where you could really settle with the Lord, wherever you are, you know, you know, sitting down or you're listening, you know, you could come to the altar and settle it with the Lord. I mean, this is a start and beginning of cure, and it's something where you could settle once and for all with the Lord. Go to Jesus Christ and talk to Him about all the burdens and things that is causing you and hindering you from having that right relationship with Jesus Christ. If you don't go to the Lord right now and settle it, when will you? Don't tell me you're going to do it when you get home. Don't tell me you're going to do it tomorrow or day after. Because if you don't do it right now, if you don't do it when you get that Holy Spirit conviction in your heart, you'll never do it. Don't be a chameleon Christian. Don't, don't just come church and think everything's okay. You have to have a, and you have to live a balanced Christian life. You cannot get away with anything. And as you know, you reap what you sow and you're well versed in those, but it's just worse to you. It doesn't really go to your heart. It doesn't hit your heart. It's time to talk deep stuff, as they say, with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Talk to Him and settle it once and for all, just like how you settle your eternal security problems by trusting Him once and for all. Then settle it. Is that your Sin A, sin B, is it something else? Settle it with him. 
Have you been stressed out all your life? Have you been stressed out recently? Have you been stressed out all the, I mean, why are you always stress, stressed out as a Christian when you could go to the Lord and settle it? Not only that, you know, being stressful affects not only your spiritual life, it affects your physical life. You want to be healthy in serving the Lord. Why want to deteriorate your health by bringing that stress in your life? Because you did not settle it with the Lord. It is time to settle it with the Lord. Can you imagine when you find out later in your life, man, I could have settled it long time ago with the Lord. I've wasted many years. I've wasted countless days because I did not settle it with the Lord. It is time for you to settle. Family problems, settle with the Lord. Financial problems, settle with the Lord. Work problems, settle with the Lord. Church problems, settle with the Lord. Whatever it may be, you have to settle it with the Lord because it's time to settle. It breaks my heart. I'm sure it breaks your loved one's heart. And how much do you think it breaks Lord's heart when you're not settled and you live a wandering life like a nomad, like that prodigal son? He came back. It's time for you to come back and settle with the Lord because our Lord and Savior, because He cares.